Hello and welcome to the Roselle and Friends talk show. Uh, we're bringing you, as we have done over the past couple of weeks, the music of black British musicians, part of the black musical history here in Britain. Uh, today we have a fantastic singer, someone who's been around for the past 30 years, who undoubtedly, his musical life testifies to the fact that we have contributed to the musical heritage of Britain. Would you agree? I do agree. Right, I okay. Agree. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today is Winston Francis. Thank you, Winston, for coming on the show today. Thank you, Rizal. Wow. Great to be here. Absolutely. Well, I mean, what can I say? If anybody wants to know about black musical history here in Britain, uh, the fact that you have, you know, you have stayed the course of time over a generation, they well, should listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're talking to you today. Thank you. Yes, Thank yours you. is, is a, a very colourful, uh, eventful musical life, isn't it? It has been, and I'm very grateful for that. Yes, and it's that journey that we're interested in. There are many people who need to know about, you know, what, is be, what it's been like for you over the past 30 years. Well, I, I must admit, it, it has been a wonderful life. But, uh, you know, in, in a lot of cases, it has been, you know, really, really dark. Yes. And the reason for that is, is that, um, you know, they, 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 the media, I don't think, you know, um, helps black musicians, right. especially the ones from, from the, the Caribbean, right. you know, to, to progress and make something out of their career. Mm -hmm. You know, because um, if, it, if it wasn't for my touring, you know, European countries and all countries in the rest of the world, right. I, I would not be working. Maybe I would be on the dole. Okay. Right. You know, so, right. um, you know, as far as... Um, the, the, this country is concerned, you know, we, we, I've got, well, most artists have got no support at all. Right, so it probably has something to do with mentoring. I mean, you, for example, you had Chuck Bird, that great impresario, writer, performer. I mean, he spotted you as a talent, a young right, talent. Right, right, yes. right. And he came along, you know, mm -hmm. and gave me encouragement yes. and took me under his wings. Yes, And yes. I studied with him, you know, he taught me, gave me voice training, right. you know, and taught me so much in the business. And I mean, not only voice uh, culture he gave me, he gave me- An uh, opportunity. Also, also, you know, ideas to, to let me know that, mm. you know, it's not just, you're going out and performing and singing. Right, right. He also uh, told me, you know, it's not just the music that you have to deal with mm -hmm. in this business. Remember, the first note of music in, is do. Oh, right. And the last note in music is do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. He said, so you have to make some bread. <laughs> and <laughs> I'll never forget that, but, right. you know, also, <laughs> you know. Practical advice. It's, 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 it, it is right. So, I mean, you, you started recording um, at the famed Coxon Studio. Oh, yes. Studio yes. One in Jamaica. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, I, I was saying, I was um, doing um, a show last night, mm -hmm. uh, on, I'm sorry, on Sunday night, and um, I was saying to, um, to some of the guys that Studio One uh, recording studio, it was a university. Okay. You know, because um, we, we, we learned so much yes. from really great musicians. Uh, guys like Ernest Wranglin, okay, you know, yes. guitarist who was yes. rated number one in the world as a guitarist right. from Jamaica. Right. You mm -hmm. know, and um, we used to go there, you know, uh, to record as, as, well, practically kids. Yes. And, uh, you know, one guy, you know, some of the, the, the kids, you know, were from affluent families. Yes. You know, like Jackie Me Too. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he was he's from an affluent family. So whenever he came to the studio, you know, he, he had enough money, you could buy, you know, like half a dozen patties. Okay. But yes. once he walked into the studios, there was like 30 guys, and we had to break them in little pieces. To share. To share. Wow. You know, and yes. uh, if you smoked and you had a cigarette, mm -hmm. you know, that cigarette will pass them around right. 10 people. Again, sharing. I'm afraid that doesn't happen today. No. You know, no, no. and it's so sad yes. to, to know that well, the artist... It's become selfish and cutthroat. Well, everything is, is, is you know, it's, it's, it's money, 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 money. Yes. You yes. know, and um, I've got to have the prettiest car or the, the best jewelry or, you it know. It probably and goes with the whole industry, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, it's, you know. It's a stereotypical it, it, imagery, yeah, imagery. Very but true. But not everyone has, has that. Very you true. Know, all but the trappings in, uh, that go with it. No. No. Well, no. If, 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 you, if you have the trappings that go with it, it means you're getting a lot of work. That's right, <laughs> yes. And many of our, our, our older pioneers 
you know, didn't have those opportunities. No, they didn't. They, they didn't. didn't at all. They didn't. Right. But you gave me a, a, a very interesting scenario about one of your travels to Berlin, Potsdam, oh. <laughs> and you know, and, and the, the. I mean, who were your fans? Who were the people screaming and shouting for well, reggae it's, music it's, and this giant of a, a reggae musician here? Well, you know, um, this was uh, before the Berlin Wall came down. Yes. You know, and it was right near to the Brandenburg Gate. It was a place called, uh, uh, it was Potsdam in yes. East Germany, mm -hmm. and I was doing uh, a, a show, it was a festival. Yes. And um, the, this festival caters for about 15, 20,000 people. And the road, you, you mind if I elaborate? Mm -hmm. at, at, the, at, at where the hotel was, it's one road going straight down mm -hmm. into this park, into Linden Park, and it's a dead end. You go into the park, right. you can't go any further. Right. And when it was our time to go on stage, you know, the, the promoter um, rang the hotel and said, tell the guys, we've got 20 minutes to get down to get on stage. Mm -hmm. And when I opened the hotel door, it was packed tight. Thousands. With all these people going into Linden Park, mm -hmm. and they were all skinheads. Right, okay. And I shut the door, <laughs> and I said, oh, they're all skinheads out there. <laughs> and we, we heard of, of the skinheads' reputation. Yes, yes, you know? yes, yes. And all these guys were in braces, and plaid shirts, and jack boots. Boots, and, yes. You know, and 14 black guys in there. I said, no, I ain't going out there. <laughs> You know, and we, we rang back and you know, the promoter said, what's the problem? He says, the place is packed with skinheads. You know, the whole road is full with them. And he said, who do you think they're coming to see? So I said, yeah. I don't know. But he said, come on out. And I said, no, no way, man. Yes. You better come get us. Yes. And the guy came up and he opened the door and he spoke in German. Yeah. And he says, guys, look who is here. It's Winston Francis with his skeleticians. And he went, hey! right. yes. And yes. I was, they, they propelled me. You know, they call it, uh, um, I think it's skiing. But, but, but you're on top of these people yes. and you just keep passing you along right, yes, until right. we got to, to the stage. To, to, to the stage awesome. You know? awesome. And these thousands of people, and believe you me, from that day, I have so much respect for, yes, for, for skinheads, yes. and I'm still working for them. Because they keep the music alive. Of course, they, of course they, they I mean, do. they have a genuine love for love it. Love for the music. That's right. And I've, I've, I've been all over the world mm -hmm. meeting these people, mm -hmm. and every single time, they are always beautiful, yes, kind, yes. respectful, mm -hmm. and they keep you alive because they keep buying more records. Yes, yes. You know, they never ask you for a free copy, or they ask, in, in, in Jamaican terms, they beg you for a burn. Mm -hmm. They never ask you for a burn. Right. They want the record to buy from you because they figure if we buy the records from, from this guy, we're mm -hmm. keeping him alive. That's right. You That's know? right. So, so really, in a way, you can't really um, discriminate. Oh no! You know, no who no. your your fans no, should no, and ought to no. be. No. I never yes. discriminate. Yes, I, yes. I only have one beef, and it's with the media. Mm -hmm. they, they, they right. Here, the BBC, it's the rate BBC Radio and BBC TV, mm -hmm. because. The last time a reggae record was in the charts was about over 35 to 37 years ago with Boris Gardner, I Want to Wake Up With You. you yes, yes, right? yes. Because their argument mm -hmm. is, is that, you know, reggae records, dancehall records, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's got a lot of profanity in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's dancehall, and that was, was finished with seven, eight, ten years right, ago. Right. Right? Since then, a lot of music. I personally, I've done a lot of commercials. Yes, yes. And the last commercial I had, my music was being played, regular music was being played, mm -hmm. was a Bartley's Bank uh, commercial with the tree, with the little gerbils running around circles. Right, the yes. music in the background is mine. It's reggae. Right, yes, yes. It's played on TV, mm -hmm. but they won't play the song. Does that, make it, does that make it difficult for our, our young budding artists? Of course it does. And so there is a sense that they may want to leave the genre altogether. And, of course. And there is more of an attraction for things American. Of course, isn't of it? course. You know, the, the black of music of... You know, or or, or completely changed yes. from music. Yes, you yes. Know? And that is the reason why they're running around in the streets. Right. I remember right. The Brix, after the Brixton yes, riots. Yes, I was going to ask you about that, sure. Because that was you changed career around yes, about the yes. 1980, 86, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Tell me I, a little bit about that. Well, you know, after the riots, you know, I, I was um, in the Brixton area, mm -hmm. and I saw so many kids running around, you know, aimlessly. This is the 1981. Yes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I thought, who is here to guide these poor kids? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and I remember one day, you know, I was talking to some guys, and this policeman, I think his name was. 
John Crow. Mm -hmm. And in Jamaica, a John Crow is a vulture. That's right. <laughs> we call them John Crow. It's in dead flesh. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, he was telling me that, you know, these kids, black kids, you know, are animals. Mm. And I said, what do, you, what do you mean by they're animals? Mm. I said, they're running wild because they have no guidance. Right. And they have no opportunities. And that is the problem we're having. Right. So I decided I was going to take the, the bull by the horn. Right. So I, I joined a club where I started giving a lot of the kids, you know, musical lessons. Yes, yes. You know, and um, just teaching them right from wrong. Yes, yes. You know. Yeah, and so much of that is needed today. It is needed Even today. Even today, you know, how many years on? It is, right. it is. So, um, you know, uh, you, you, but you, you did have um, a, music, uh, a record that was very, very popular in the UK. Tell us about that one. Uh, you mean recently or years ago when I just years came? Years ago when you just came to oh, London. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, well, that actually brought you over to London. Yes, 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 yes. yes. It was a, a popular song by the Mamas and Papas. Yes, yes. You know, called California, California Dreaming. Dreaming. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. And uh, uh, it, it was, it, even from the inception of recording the song, I remember Mr. Dodd calling me in and he says, I've got a hit song for you. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. He says, yep. And um, we recorded California Dreaming yes. with some of the best musicians in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And um, they, we recorded the, the, the music and the voice at the same time. Right. But we needed the backing vocals to be done. Okay. And uh, the girls that Mr. Dodd usually have to do the backing vocals did not turn up that evening. So Bob Marley, Ken Booth, All right. and myself decided we were going to go in. No, well, it's just Bob, more Bob. of our giants. Yeah, <laughs> Bob just said, you know, what time are you going to be recording the, doing the backing vocals? And I said, the girls haven't turned up. He said, let's go and do it. Right. So we all went in, you know, and did the backing vocals. Amazing. And that evening, I'll never forget, Mr. Dodd came back and he says, boy. My girls them sound goody. <laughs> and Bob got angry and he says, Mr. D, Sir D, you're calling me a girl? girl. <laughs> and he said, no, the girls that were singing. And he said, that was me. Right. And Winston and Ken. He says, oh, boy, you sound angelic. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Compliment. the record came yeah. out. It came to the UK and it yes. became a hit. I mean, but today you are someone who is enjoying the fruits of your labor. Yeah, well, yeah, of course, yes, 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 yes. I am. Yeah, I'm, 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 I must say that, yes. And, and, you know, I take my hat off to you, the fact that you are what I would call a, a musical style work. You've run the course of time. You've been there. You are still there today. I mean, many of your peers have, have gone, right. long gone. Right. And Sadly. you continue to influence and um, uh, excite people with those dulcet tones, that, that, <laughs> that song, the, the, that voice. I mean, you've been called Mr. Cool. Yes, I've been called so many names. <laughs> Lots of names, yes, I do know that. But, you know, I, I, what I wanted the viewers to, to, to know was this, that 30 years on, you know, is really, uh, you know, you, 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 know you, you, have, you have arrived, more than arrived, you have um, earned whatever it is that fruit is today that makes it good, you have earned it. Thank you. You've thank been you, there, and you. I really, really thank you. And I want, if, if it's the only thing that young people will take away today, is the fact that you've been determined. Right. You've you, been you, there. You have to, you have to have yeah. a determination. And, and you have to, you, you have to, if you, if you get bad knocks along the way, yes. you have to disregard them. That's it. Don't so, give up. No. That's I'm going what forward. I like. Yes. I'm going forward. That's right. And continue to go. Yes. Because, yes. you know, um, I mean, I, I've been in this country for 43 years. Wow. And, um, when I came over in, in 72. But um, I never gave up. No. You yeah. know, and I continued to work. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm very grateful to my career because it has yes. taken me everywhere possible I can Around think of the in the world. world. Yes, you know? yes, that's wonderful. Um, and I've played with some of the best bands and orchestras yes. you can possibly think of. I did a couple of shows with a band called uh, Dancing Mood in Buenos Aires. Yes. And I, when I was given the job to go there, I could not believe when I got there to hear the sound of these guys, Spanish guys, yes. sp uh, playing reggae and ska music. It blew my mind. Right, right. You know, I've been to Japan where I, I played with Japanese bands and I heard a guy imitating me <laughs> and I thought it was me. <laughs> Vincent Francis, thank you so much for coming you, on the show today. Thank I am honoured to have you. Thank really you, honoured to have you on the show thank you. today. Thank you very much. And you're going to sing something for us today? Certainly. Yes, Certainly. okay. Well, take it away, Winston. Thank you. Thank you. If your heart's been shattered, the peace
faces have scattered all across the ground of loneliness. Just to reach for your phone, I'll be there at home. My name is Fix It, I'll be there. Love is not a bed of roses, and life is not the game it seems. If you've been mistreated by your lover, don't worry, come see me. If your heart's been shattered, the pieces have scattered. Hi, my name is Winston Francis, and you're watching the Roselle and Friends talk show. Are you a published writer? Why not join Roselle's book club? Send us your books for review each month and take part in our Book of the Month competition. This will give you a chance to have it nominated as our Book of the Year. For more details and where to send your book, please visit our website at www.roselleandfriends.com. Now, let's go over to Roselle's Book Club. How does Calypso become a novel? Well, the suggestion is that there is a fusion. There is a fusion of literary text as the written word and also musical genre or an oral genre. The fact is the, the genre, this fusion, is constantly changing. Changing as fast as society changes. Changes can be as varied as diasporic movements of the people around the globe and their frequent interactions uh, back into their own landscape out there in the diaspora and uh, you know around the globe. So it means that their their creations or their creative techniques and skills are constantly being added to. Certainly from England, this would be regarded as black British writing. A woman of destiny eclipse a novel, the first of its kind in the world today. A Woman of Destiny Eclipse a Novel also has a study guide. The text study guide presents chapter analysis. You will find setting, plot, structure, characterization, contextual background, some reading approaches at advanced levels. A very valuable companion to that text for those who want an in-depth study of that novel. Uh, certainly for schools, colleges, universities and so on. A must. The importance of this book, A Woman of Destiny, Eclipse or Novel, to the Caribbean literary canon is this. Some 30 years ago, Kenneth Ramchand, in his seminal work, The West Indian Novel and Its Background in 1970, gave the primacy to the literariness of the genre. After Ramchand, some 14 years later, Edward Kamau Brathwaite, in his book, A History of the Voice, uh, changed that perspective and suggested that the primacy of the voice to Caribbean literary texts is what we have. However, during my own research, 30 years on, I have fused these two schools of thought. So what we have in this book, A Woman of Destiny, Eclipse of Novel, is an merging of these two schools of thought Ramchands and Brathwaite's, so that the suggestion here is that we have a fusion of the literariness and the orality of, of um, these two genres, which have created something very unique, something very bold, innovative, and it's the reality of these two thoughts that have been merged in A Woman of Destiny, Eclipse a Novel. I would say, look out for Eclipse a Novel number two. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Roselle and Friends Kitchen. Yes, we're continuing our series Each One Teach One where each week we have a guest who will cook some nutritious uh, home cooked food to bring back the fun and enjoyment of cooking. So today we have Thomas. Hello Thomas. Hello. Well, welcome to our kitchen. What will you cook for us today? 
Um, today I will cook for you creamy greens pasta with lemon hmm. and some grated cheese on the top, which is parmesan. Right, that sounds lovely. Okay, and creamy greens with pasta. Uh, simple? Very simple. Quick right. dish, mm -hmm. only 15 minutes. 15 minutes, that's wonderful. Yeah. Ideal for every busy mother. Yes. Um, sure. Ideal for busy office workers. Yes. Ideal for everyone, actually. Yes, okay. 15 minutes. Roughly how much the cost? About 10 pounds. 10, 10 pounds, right, okay. So that's why you should have this kind of home cooked food. Yeah. Right, so take it away. So I'm going to introduce you my ingredients, which is pasta, linguine, fresh basil, munch too, mm -hmm. uh, soft cheese, full fat soft cheese, you can get in any shop, parmesan, broccoli, and green peas. Right. One lemon mm -hmm. and red pepper. Right. A little bit of olive oil and, of course, salted pepper. Excellent. I've got ready for. For myself, a little bit of olive oil, green peas, right. basil, salt and pepper, mm. lemon juice inside. What will you do with that? I will blitz it and use that oil just to get the extra flavour into the pasta. Right. So as you can see, that's quite clear, Fresh. clear yes. um, ingredients. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to start from cooking that pasta okay. into the boiling water. And how long is the pasta going to cook for? Eight minutes. Eight minutes, right. Yes. Okay. So. Eight minutes it is. Pasta. I just drop the pasta into that pot. Now I will add some uh, oil so that when I take the pasta out, it's not sticking together. Right, okay. So now I will cut those broccoli into little pieces for a cook into that pot. That will be ready. Okay, so as soon as vegetables are done, going back into that bowl. Mm -hmm. We're not using that bit. We're going to get prep, prep the garnish, which is our red pepper. Okay. I will slice that red pepper mm -hmm. into very thin slices, right. so it's nice, crunchy. To give it a beautiful mm. red contrast with the green, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, very professional cut there. Now I will pick that parsley, because we don't really want it to have that hard bits into our pasta. So you're taking just the leaves off? Just the leaves off. Pencil. Chopped down. Black pepper. Right. Okay. It's all fresh flavour, isn't it? Yep. Everything is very nice and, and fresh. fresh. Yes. That's the beauty about home cooking, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's, so you know nice. exactly what you're eating as well. Yep. Yes. Simple, fresh and That's healthy. right. That's right. Okay. There you go. That's what we need here. We're going to add a little bit of black pepper. Black pepper. We don't really use the salt because that cheese is quite salty. Salt, and right. the pasta will be salty, you don't want to right. okay. get over salt. Simplicity and nutrition. Yeah. Right. Now we're going to cut a little bit of that lemon just to squeeze the juice into the cheese. Into the cheese. Ah, okay. We're going to grate it skin so because you we need, need to the zest right. ah. for an extra flavor. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, Lemon freshness. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. So I'm going to bleach that oil, herb oil right now. Yes. It's also going to have a, that lovely green colour. Right, yes. Next okay. thing we're going to do, we're going to cook our vegetables. Okay. First of all, we're dropping into the boiling water broccoli because mm -hmm. they don't take a long time to cook. Mm -hmm. We're going to add that, the munch too. Munch too. Right, okay. And at the end, we're just going to drop green peas. peas as well. Okay. Right. Now we're going to add the rest of that vegetables right. into the boiling water. Mm -hmm. That's the munch to go in. Munch to go in. Yes. Green peas. Peas are going in. Yeah. Yes. By the time vegetables are cooking, we can add that lovely cheese with herbs and lemon ah, yes. into um, our pasta. Really well, it makes it. Well. Yeah. Yes. So in there we have the chopped up basil. Chopped up basil. We yeah. have the lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Some of that. Herb oil, I like think. Ah, did yes, before. yes, no, that looks interesting. And this is going to give it that fresh yeah. flavour, isn't it? More of the basil, olive oil, the lemon zest, and some peas. Now I'm going to add a little bit of w hot water into it. Yes. Just to make it more smooth because of the cheese. Okay. Still sticky. Yes. yes. Our vegetables are ready. We're mm -hmm. going to add them into that pasta. Okay. Right now. So that's your peas, your munch too, and, and broccoli. broccoli. Mm -hmm. 
Right. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that herb oil. Okay. I think it's just not enough. Good wholesome food. We plated it up. We're gonna do a little garnish with the herb oil. Ah yes. Around it. That looks very stylish. Here I've got more basil. I picked more it before. More basil, yes. Just to put to it around so it, it looks nicely. Yes. Yeah, but it looks very, That's why I've very got good. red pepper cut it before. And that's where you're going to contrast it. Look yeah. at that. Look at the contrast of that. And Wonderful. parmesan <coughs> cheese. And parmesan as well. Whoa. And the black pepper. Black pepper. Yep. Happy. That's it. That perfect. Was my pasta. Absolutely perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can't wait to taste it. Absolutely di divine. It looks delicious. The colouring, the contrast, the presentation is superb. Thank you. And so now I'm going to taste it. There you go. Okay. Thank you. There's nothing like proof, which is in the pudding or the eating. And here we go. Rich, delicious. Mm, I can get the, the, the zest, the tanginess. Mm -hmm. um, also the basil, dominant, really, really nice. The cheese, and it's got a lovely, thick, rich uh, mixture in your mouth. That is absolutely delicious. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming Thank on you. the Roselle and Friends Kitchen.